Hillary took the early 2000s by storm. Okay, you could hear her everywhere. She was on all the radio stations, the billboard charts. She had energetic live performances, energetic music videos. Her songs was really catchy. She had a unique sound, which was the go-go sound, which if you're from the DMV, it is a popular sound. And she also inspired a lot of people, a lot of artists that were coming up in the early 2000s, right? But with her unique sound, you would think, what happened to A. Marie? What happened to her? She just seems to kind of disappear from the industry and took a major step back. We're going to get into where she is now, what's going on, and why did she leave the industry and a lot more but first hey friend welcome to my channel Kareen Allude where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars through history if you're not yet subscribed please be sure to do so and if you're already subscribed please turn on your notification bell so you never miss an upload now let's get into this video let's start from the very beginning which is her childhood born under the winter sky on January 12 1980 in the charming town of Fitchburg Massachusetts Amory Rogers began her journey in life the beautiful blend of cultures that she embodied was a result of her Korean mom, Misuk, and her African-American dad, Charles Rogers. But Amory didn't have much time to get accustomed to the American lifestyle as the Rogers clan packed their bags for South Korea just months after Amory's arrival. During her toddler years, Amory got to experience the vibrant life of South Korea for three years. This was possible because her dad served as a chief warrant officer in the U.S. military. His job required the family to move around quite a bit, so Amory got to call many places home. From the frosty realms of Alaska to the cowboy land of Texas, from the historical state of Virginia to the distant land of Germany. Amory also had a younger playmate, her sister Angela Rogers, who is a lawyer now and grew up to be her legal advisor. The Rogers household was a strict one with traditional Christian values at its core. The girls weren't allowed to leave their house or even use the phone on school days, a rule set by their protective and conservative parents, which eventually paid off because they didn't get into much trouble growing up and were very polished children. Amory's academic journey led her to Georgetown University where she dove into the world of literature. To afford her education, she joined the Navy ROTC, a decision she made independently without any pressure from her military dad. However, after two years in ROTC, she decided to step away and focus on her studies. She graduated proudly with a BA in English and an additional sprinkle of creativity with a fine arts minor in design. While hitting the books at Georgetown University, Amory found an unexpected friend and a local club promoter from Washington, D.C. This new ally played a crucial role in her life by connecting her with music producer Rich Harrison. In a chat with Maxim Magazine, Amory shared how she decided to meet Rich in a public place since he was a stranger to her. The rendezvous spot, a McDonald's parking lot. Here in the midst of cars and fast food, Rich played his tracks and Amory lent her voice to them and they both knew they had struck gold. Rich Harrison, fresh off his work on Mary J. Blige album Mary and No More Drama, started crafting demos with Amory. This collaboration was a stepping stone that led to Amory's first record deal with Columbia Records. According to Amory, she and Harrison clicked right away. In a 2002 interview with Hip Online, she said, For some reason, we had a very special chemistry. When we would work together, something great would happen. And something great did happen. In 2002, her debut single, Why Don't We Fall In Love, hit the airwaves and climbed to number 23 on the Billboard Hot 100, making a splash on the hot R&B hip hop songs and hot dance club play charts. It also made waves in Australia and the UK. Amory's debut album, All I Have, entirely produced and co-written by Rich Harrison, was released the same year to widespread acclaim. It sold 89,000 copies in its first week alone and has since been certified gold by the RIAA, with 657,000 copies sold by 2009. To promote the album, Amory went on tour with Usher and Nas and rapper Nelly. In 2003, Amory scooped up the Soul Train Music Award for Best New Artist and earned nominations for Best R&B Soul Album, All I Have, and Best R&B Soul Single, Female, Why Don't We Fall In Love. She was also nominated for a BT Award and an Image Award. Her voice graced LL Cool J's song Paradise, which made a mark on the hot R&B hip hop songs chart. 2004 saw Amory start work on her second album, Touch, once again alongside Rich Harrison. The album's lead single, One Thing, released in 2005, became Amory's biggest hit till date. 
topping charts in the US and the UK and earning a gold certification from the RIAA. The success of Touch and One Thing led to two Grammy nominations for A. Marie in 2006. The hit single also won Club Banger of the Year at the 2005 Vibe Awards and was adapted into various remixes by rappers like Eve, Fabulous, and Jay-Z. In 2009, One Thing claimed the sixth spot on the Roots list of the top 10 hip-hop R&B songs of the 2000s. She went on to release two more albums, Because I Love It in 2007 and In Love and War 2009. Now let's talk about a little bit of the controversy between her and Beyonce. So Twitter and TikTok has been buzzing lately with some serious music drama. Fans have been wondering if Beyonce, the queen bee herself, might have borrowed a bit too much from A. Marie, another talented singer who's been under the radar for a while. A. Marie, who's a Korean American singer, hit the charts with her song One Thing, which was part of her second album Touch. This track had a unique sound, often described as go-go. That was fresh and it was different, but soon after big stars like Beyonce and J-Lo started releasing songs that seemed to have a similar vibe. The plot thickens when we consider Beyonce's smash hit Crazy in Love. Some fans notice it sounded a bit too close to Amory's One Thing, leading to accusations of Beyonce borrowing her sound. And there were many other songs that people said maybe Beyonce borrowed the sound that Amory had. Let me show you guys some examples. The key to this mystery lies in the hands of one man, Rich Harrison, which was her producer. He's a music producer who worked with a whole bunch of top singers, including A. Marie, Tony Braxton, Mary J. Blige, and Carly Rowland from Destiny's Child. He also happens to be the producer behind both One Thing and Crazy in Love. First, whenever you're working with a producer, most producers have their own unique style also, and you can kind of see the influence of a producer in, an, in another artist. Depending on the artist they work with, you can literally see the influence of a producer. If one producer goes and work with another artist, there will be similar sounds, but it's not necessarily the artist biting that style. Producers can grow in popularity and everyone would want to work with them. If you give one person a hit, of course somebody else is going to want to work with you because you're a hit maker, <laughs> you know? So it's not really a stealing sound and that happens in the industry. The drama might be fun to follow, but at the end of the day, it's clear that the similar sounds come down to the same producer working with a group of talented singers at Columbia Records in the early 2000s. Whether you're on Team Beehive or Team A. Marie, there's no denying that both these ladies have given us so much great music to enjoy. But I really do think that A. Marie was known for that sound. It was a sound that she did help cultivate with Rich Harrison. And, you know, he just got popular and started working with other people. And I think it might have discouraged her a little bit and just made her take a step back from the industry to see a sound that you, you know, really took and made your own be used everywhere else and everyone in the early 2000s started using it and popping off with it it could be very discouraging so i understand that also now in terms of her relationship in 2007 amory began dating her manager sony music executive lenny nicholson it was officially announced that amory and nicholson were engaged on february 27th 2010 and a couple married on june 25th 2011 in an oceanfront ceremony in anguilla on may 15th 2018 the couple welcomed their first child a son now where is she now just because she hasn't been on your playlist often doesn't mean she's been in hiding she's not in hiding in recent years a marie has developed quite the following on youtube her channel focuses on beauty and books which i love and speaking of books her passion for literature led her to publish an anthology entitled because you love to hate me 13 tales of villainy a series of stories that focus on the bad guys instead of the hero personally with the way the industry is heading maybe it was a good thing that she went independent and took a step back it can be pretty dark you know the industry especially with everything that's coming out and those at the top rarely have their hands clean and I love what she's doing with the book club and she has this really cute children's book out called you will do great things it's really adorable if you're a mommy with kids or a daddy with kids I think it's a really cute children's book you guys should check it out it's really cute but she's not into hiding. She is still very much very outspoken on her social medias also about the current state of the world and her book club. She has over, I believe, 1.3 million subscribers to her 
book club. Oh, so she's doing pretty well for herself. And she's a very educated, very well-spoken young lady. And I say young lady, although she's 43 years old, she still looks 20, right? She just doesn't age at all. Like I'm shocked to find out that she was only 43 because I was like, what? So I'll end this on a beautiful sweet note okay let's talk about her beauty secrets real quick amory is currently 43 as we stated and she looks like she's in her early 20s she credits her mother's korean beauty tips and has shared her secrets to looking so useful she told the mirror and i quote i keep my skin looking best with lots of sleep and pure food grade sweet almond oil a lot of people seem to think it's bad to use oil on your face but it's great for you if i have any kind of irritation it just calms it down end quote she also believes in eating organic foods and avoiding harsh chemicals like Botox on her body and skin. So you won't see her doing any plastic surgery. She has looked the same since she came into the scene and just continues to age backwards. But comment below your thoughts. What do you think? And who else would you guys like me to do a video for? I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time.